Somewhere in time on Premier Radio Networks. Tonight, an encore presentation of Coast to Coast AM from December 1st, 1995. Sally Ho in the nighttime, all night live talk radio. It's your turn with Dr. Nick Begich. He's in Alaska. He's co authored a book called Angels Don't Play This Heart. Have you ever felt a sudden, unexplainable mood swing? Could it have been harp? Yes. It could be. Are they going to run up the power and run up the bill and really get going with harp? Well, that is the plan. Will it get funded? Some people say no. Others say the funding to continue harp and enlarge harp is a done deal. I think I'm one of those people. I'm sure it's going to get funded. If this is really what they say it is, you know it's going to get funded. We'll be back to Dr. Begich in a moment. Back now to Alaska and Dr. Nick Begich. Doctor? How are you? Um, very well, thank you. Uh, you're, you're doing quite a marathon here. <laughs> but this is, I, I think this is very, very important. It's something the American people have got to know about. And a lot of people out there listening, probably their eyes glaze over a little at the technical details. But, folks, this is, uh, I guess, Tesla technology being applied in a, I don't want to say a haphazard, but in terms of the effect it's going to have on our Earth, uh, a kind of a <clears throat> irresponsible way. I, I mean, without knowing what you're doing to the environment you've got to live in, it's a little irresponsible. Uh, would you use that word? Yeah, and, you know, it, it's going to lead me to, to two points that we've missed. The first point is, you know, has, has the government tried this kind of irresponsible thing in Alaska before? Have they? And let's talk about that. In 1960, early 1960s, Edward Teller, who was like the father of the uh, nuclear age, if you will, came to Alaska with the idea of detonating six thermal nuclear bombs to create a bay here, to excavate a bay. The University of Alaska Fairbanks, which is the same university that's supporting this project through their Geophysical Institute, supported that project. Now, anyone proposing that in 1996 they'd be laughed out of the room as totally insane. Absolutely. And yet, here they were. And the only people that stopped that project in the early 60s was the biological team that happened to be assigned to that project who was able to raise enough of an international um, complaint, if you will, that they actually shut it down and didn't do it. Instead, hmm. they, they made the experiment actually, unfortunately, art in your neighborhood in Nevada. Yes. But, but they didn't do it here, and it was stopped by biological scientists. And Edward Teller came to Alaska just at the beginning of the HARP project, announcing this wonderful new weapon system that they could operate on the north slope of Alaska. Hmm. And I believe it was this system. And what's interesting about that is when you look at the patents about the ideal location for these kinds of transmitters, it's the north slope of Alaska because it's at the, at the north slope of Alaska where the magnetic lines of force right. intersect the earth. The closer you can get to that, the easier it is to get the energy into those magnetic lines of force because it's intended to travel along them to create this huge effect over a large area. The other point that they make is that it just so happens that the north slope of Alaska is holding trillions and trillions of cubic feet of natural gas without a market. They're not moving that gas anywhere but pumping it right back into the ground because there's no gas line coming out of Alaska. The other thing that people may not be aware of is there's a lot of national debate on opening the Anwar, which is a wildlife nice. refuge. When you look at the map of Alaska on the right side of Prudhoe Bay where the oil is, and we're pumping two million barrels of oil at peak out of there right now, about a million and a half barrels a day. But on the left-hand side is the, na is the Naval Petroleum Reserve, the National Petroleum Reserve, right. which has numbers of wells that have been capped off but drilled to delineate fields. That covers a vast, vast area. <laughs> Excuse me. When yeah. you look at that area, it's the size of many states. Um, maybe as big as the state of, let me think here, a state to give it some, some proportional reference. Probably the si size of, of um, Wisconsin sitting there that's basically petroleum reserve. 
So, and here it is. It's a Naval Petroleum Reserve. Within the middle of that reserve, this system is designed to be modular, movable, and to be able to add on to it incrementally without throwing away any of the old components. In other words, they can move this to set up a site. It didn't take that long. It took about three months to erect, most of the time spent putting in a gravel pad. So here you have the ideal location, the necessary energy reserves owned by the federal government, to affect this kind of system, and what Teller was telling us was that they were going to put them across the northern portion of Alaska, which in fact would give you huge power capabilities because there are what they there are these generators that they have now that weigh about forty thousand pounds that'll generate ten megawatts of um, power. And remember, a megawatt in is a gigawatt out. That's right. So here you have the ability to set up these facilities across the North Slope. And these gas fields, these aren't like oil fields in some parts of the world that pump out, you know, a, a 25, 50 barrels of oil a day and a little bit of natural gas. These are pumping out thousands of barrels of oil per well per day and many, many, many cubic feet of natural gas potential that's being reinjected in the field. So one gas well could generate the kind of gas necessary to produce the electricity to produce this kind of effect, and they're small enough. So, in other words, they've got the natural resources to drive the generators to produce the power they need to do what they're about to do. Exactly. And uh, the other part is, is these are the old dew line sites where they had the radar sites sure. to protect us from incoming. So they sure. already have airstrips, infrastructure. Everything is already in place. I've got you. All right, let's go back. To